Hey, how's it going guys? It's the Lomser here and welcome back to another Rocket League video and in this one guys We are gonna be going through five tips and tricks that will help you get better at Rocket League Especially for the end of season three So with this one these tricks and tips are more meant for prospect challenger and also kind of the early ranks of the star tier But they can still be good reminders to those of you in the higher ranks now actually jumping right into it with the first tip of this video And this one actually comes from the sponsor of this video But starting off if you want to get into those higher ranks you definitely need to find good teammates that are right around your skill level. Now the best way to do that that I've found is actually using this app called Gamerlink which is completely 100% free. You don't have to pay anything to use it but it's pretty much an app that works with Rocket League and it simply helps you find the perfect teammates based on skill, rank, their play style, even if they have a mic and stuff like that. So again definitely check this one out. It will be down in the description and when you sign up be sure to click the thing that says the Lamaser sent you because you can actually get my special badge to show off in the app which come on you have to admit looks so freaking beautiful but anyways moving on to the next tip of this video this one has to do with the in-game custom training options which you obviously know all too well is an amazing tool to help you get better at specific things in the game like practicing aerials air dribbles ground shots saves pretty much anything you want but that's not the tip I want to show you today I actually want to show you how to make training more efficient than just going through it in the normal way so what I mean by going through it in the normal way is obviously just how you do it usually. You go into the custom training, you select one of the sessions and just go into it like that. However, there's actually a better way to go through training. Now unfortunately, this does only work with ones that you've created, but generally those are actually the best trainings for you because you've made them specifically for things that you want to practice. Now once you know the training that you want to mess with, don't hover over it and press A to do it normally. Instead, hover over that training and press X or whatever button it is to edit it and go straight into the shot list menu. This allows you to do things way better than normally and actually there's quite a few benefits to it now the first of which is pretty obvious but by going into this menu right here you can select whatever shot out of order that you want to practice so instead of going through the normal way of training and just going through every single one in order you can select a specific shot and click on it and then click on the button that says test shot which allows you to practice that one specifically now along with this by practicing this single shot it lets you repeat this one over and over and over again so as you can see here if you score and go into the replay once you click away from that replay it'll keep letting you redo that shot so obviously this is great for practicing a single type of shot without making a completely separate training now along with that one of the other great things of going through the edit menu is that when you're on the shot list you can press to test sequence and this simply allows you to skip that very annoying message in the beginning that asks you to acknowledge if you want to reset the shot now I don't know why this message is even there in the first place because it's so freaking annoying but by doing this it for some reason and bypasses that and it's just another easier thing that you don't have to worry about now the last awesome thing about going through this test sequence is that you can directly edit the shot so say you're practicing one like off the backboard and you've noticed that your car is just a little bit too far away to actually get to it you can just press the back button and go to edit your car and move it forward it's just such a simple thing that you can't do in the usual mode that's just incredibly helpful so with that on top of all of the other amazing benefits of this it is by far the best way to do training now moving on to the next tip here and this one actually has to do with getting in game playing in ranked and stuff like that and this one is definitely meant for lower level players like prospect and challenger but it is honestly such a simple thing that can help you out so much now the thing I'm talking about is simply trusting your teammates now you may think you have this down to a point but a lot of people do not and I honestly see it so much now it's not exactly a bad thing for me because it is nice when my opponents mess up but honestly it's something that everybody should know how to do now specifically Specifically, what I mean by trusting your teammates is for one, when they're going up for an aerial, trust them to hit it. Don't expect them to miss it and be going up like you're going to get it after they miss it because that's just a terrible way to think about it and will more often than not leave you in a very bad position. And also with this, if your teammate is closer to getting that aerial, freaking let them have it. If you're in a defensive position and the ball goes up closer to where your teammate is and you decide you can get to it first, that is a very bad mistake. Like when you do this, your teammate has no idea that you're going for that aerial and because they're closer and the ball should be theirs to take they're gonna go for it as well and again you're gonna be out of position and it's just not gonna work out now the other most important way that this happens is when you and your teammates are in goal guarding it from shots coming in and an opponent is in the corner with the ball and they go to center it towards the net now the right way to handle this situation is to let whoever's closest to it go for the ball and try and clear it that way but again I see so often in the lower levels that the guy behind their teammate goes for it as well this again is just 
such a bad way to do it because you're suddenly both going for the ball and if you both happen to get beat your net is left wide open so in conclusion if your friend is closer to the ball trust that they're going to do the right thing with it but moving on again here to something that's actually pretty similar to that another really important sort of skill that just has to do with playing the game itself is knowing when to go for the ball now honestly this is a little hard to explain and sort of give you pointers on because it is definitely something that you get with practice playing a ton of games and just getting that overall feeling for it but pretty much the basic thing about it is you only want to go for the ball when you are for sure that you can get to it first or at least block it so again this comes a lot with practice and being able to judge those distances of you and the ball and also your opponent to the ball but once you start to get it down it helps out a lot so basically just start to think about this and again this is for those of you who are still fairly new to the game but for a while just try to consciously think of the distance between you and the ball if you can make it or if you can't and whether or not it would actually be better to stay where you are sort of stay in a defensive position instead of committing to hit that ball and potentially get beaten by your opponent so again don't be a ball chaser don't constantly go for the ball because more often than not it will not end well but anyways moving on to the final tip of this video and this is kind of more of a general one but I want to talk to you guys a bit about camera settings so yeah if you're still using the default camera settings for Rocket League you need to change them right now now if you didn't know there's actually a full list of the pro players camera settings and I will leave a link to that down below in the description but if you use this you get a very good general idea of what the best camera settings are and also let's just take a look at mine real quick because a lot of you have been asking me what my settings are so basically mine were based off of this list I can't remember exactly who I looked at but I kind of just took a pro like Cronovi or something and kind of messed with it from there and honestly for you as well a lot of it is going to come down to preference but basically the very first thing that you want to do is make sure that camera shake is not on this setting is honestly super annoying and you might not notice the difference at first but without question definitely turn it off as for the next setting with camera field of view I always have this on 110 or maxed out the majority of pro players have this setting maxed out just because it lets you see a lot more of the field which is obviously just really helpful as for camera distance and height I have my distance at 270 which is pretty average and then I have my height a little higher than most of the pros at 140 and this is similar to how gambit has it but I just kind of prefer to have a little bit higher view of the car so I can see the front more easily but overall it's not too big of a deal but then for camera angle I have mine at negative 7 just because again I can see more of the car and it just feels really comfortable now as for the camera stiffness and this is one that a lot of you probably don't even know what it does but I have mine at 0.5 and I definitely think you guys should have it somewhere between 0.4 and 0.7 because if you don't know what camera stiffness is it's basically to what degree the camera tries to stay right behind your car now the best way to see the difference in this is when drifting back and forth because as you can see here when you have your stiffness on zero the camera really slides to each side and it's pretty freaking distracting however once you change it up to like 0 0.5 0 0.7 or even higher it stays behind your car way better and is just really helpful now for the final setting camera swivel speed this one varies a ton like you have pro players with this setting on one and then you have players with it on 10 so this one definitely comes down to preference I have mine on three it works fine and it's honestly not going to affect how you play that much but with that that is pretty much it for my camera settings I'm gonna say it one more time it comes down a lot to preference but definitely check out the pro players list of camera settings and mess around with things get a feel for what each of them does because having good camera settings can be extremely beneficial to you but anyways guys that is gonna be it for today's video I hope you enjoyed it and if you did be sure to leave a like down below it only takes a second and it helps me out a ton and do not forget to subscribe as well as check out some of my previous videos which should be popping up on the screen right now including a full walkthrough of the rules for the brand new drop shot game mode as well as on the right all of the info and secrets for the brand new update but other than that guys again I hope you enjoyed today's video I'm the Lama Sir and I will see you guys next time